Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special bonus episode of the Best Phone Plans podcast. Joining me today, we have special guest Mike Dano, Light Reading's editorial director, writing about 5G and mobile strategies. Mike, welcome to the show. So great to have you here. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I wanted to bring you on because you had this amazing piece. It's like, I want to say almost like 3,000 words or something, diving in deep into a very interesting topic, T-Mobile's Spectrum Holdings, specifically their mid-band 5G Spectrum Holdings. And what I thought would have been sort of a simple, clear-cut solution turns out to have uh, some interesting plot twists going on. So I think maybe starting from the top, what is Spectrum? And then maybe what's going on with the T-Mobile situation? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, uh, get ready because it gets uh, it gets real complex real fast. But, uh, you know, I think it, it, just to keep it like, you know, high, sort of high level is that if if you think about it, Spectrum is just like owning land. You, you can't build a house on somebody else's land. And so the way that some Spectrum works is that you you do have to have a license in order to broadcast inside of that Spectrum, you know, like the FM radio stations that you listen to in your car, like they have a license to broadcast in that in that particular uh, channel. And if anyone else broadcasts in it or builds a house in that, you know, in that real estate, they, they're not allowed to do that. So, you know, Verizon, AT&T, everybody has, you know, licenses so that they can use that particular chunk of spectrum and no one else can. Yeah. And um what I guess, what does a license cover? Because when I first started hearing about this term, I thought, great, you buy this license, you can basically build and use it across the entire United States. But it, it sounds like it might be different than that. Like, are there certain regions? What are you actually buying when you buy a Spectrum license? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All Spectrum licenses are different. Spectrum licenses. Some are, you know, cover a whole state. Some cover a whole city and some cover, cover like a tiny little neighborhood. Um, some have restrictions on how how like powerful the, the broadcast can be. Some have restrictions on whether you know you have to like set up a network and actually use it, otherwise you lose it. Um, some have restrictions about like you can only use it unless the military needs it. And if the military needs it, you can't use it. So there's all kinds of uh, different restrictions depending on what the spectrum band is and, and what the terms are. Yeah. Wow. It, it sounds like the land analogy is perfect because there's zoning restrictions. And if you buy a land, let's say in Massachusetts, you can't build a house in Colorado. Like you need to buy land in Colorado also. So it really does kind of make sense from that standpoint. Yeah, um, for sure. And just, and just like uh, real estate stuff, like there's rules that were developed in the sixties. There's rules that were developed last year. They might not be compatible together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I know um, in Colorado, at least sometimes if you have like a second or maybe it's Boulder County, if you have two stories, like the second story is taxed differently. Like there's tons of regulations around it. So it makes sense. Um, carriers are using spectrum to deploy their networks. They have to buy all these licenses in the places they want to cover in order to, to build out the network. Um, T-Mobile, they're using 2.5 gigahertz for their mid-band 5G network. They're calling it 5G ultra capacity. But you actually had an interesting take in the article. Where did this spectrum actually originate? Where did it come from? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the, the history of that particular band. I, I, I didn't know about it until I really started digging into it. But, you know, the as you know, the FCC is the one who sort of allocates all that spectrum. They're the ones that that, that um, hold on to it and then release it as they deem necessary. And um, uh, in the 1960s, the FCC decided that they had this chunk of spectrum, no one was using it. And so they decided to give it to uh, high schools and colleges and churches, educational institutions, so that those educational institutions could broadcast educational TV stations to like offices and workplaces and stuff. This was during the Cold War. And so the idea was that we'd make everybody smarter by broadcasting educational content. And that would help the US in the Cold War against the Soviet Union. And so <laughs> hardcore, I mean, it, this gets like way deep into the arcane nature of spectrum licensing. But that was the original intent of that band that T-Mobile is now using for 5G. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. They were almost ahead of their time. Like, I feel like online courses are more popular now. We're like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're yeah, that's true. Educational institutions actually using it? Like, were they building it out? Did they have requirements to use it? Or were they able to just kind of get it and sit on it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, 
th th there certainly were some educational institutions who who did do that, um, and, and still to this. Well, up until uh, uh, just a few years ago, there was a requirement by the FCC that you did have to use at least a portion of that license for some educational broadcasts. But, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that very few of these TV stations got set up. And, you know, basically since uh, from uh, 1960 to about 1990, those that spectrum mostly sat uh, unused. Um, there was only a few actual functional TV stations. And whether anyone watched those uh, educational TV shows, I don't know. I doubt it was a lot of, a lot yeah. of viewership there. Right, right. A hundred percent. And it sounds like so some educational institutions had it. And then it sounds like the FCC made it available to carriers because obviously Sprint purchased a lot of it and then T-Mobile purchased Sprint. So how is T-Mobile using it now? And what kind of agreements have they set up with some of these educational institutions? Yeah, yeah, kind of around about the 80s and 90s, what the FCC realized is that, you know, this, this is not being used as intended. And so they basically told, but they had already given out these licenses to high schools and colleges and whatever that, and so they, you know, they owned those licenses. The FCC wasn't really in a position to just take it all back and, you know, sort of refresh the band. So instead what they said is they said to those educational institutions that had that, those spectrum licenses, they said, okay, we, you know, we're not, we're not, we know you're not doing TV with it. That's, that's fine. What you can do with it is, is just like lease it out to other people who might be able to use it. That way the educational institution can, can make some money through these leases. And then other companies like Nextel or Clearwire, if, uh, if you go way back in your telecom history, th those were the companies that, that said, oh yeah, like, we could probably put those licenses to use. You know, we could build a wireless network with those licenses. And so that's essentially what they did is they, you know, instead of normally like an AT&T and Verizon, they just buy the license and then they own the license and then they just have it. But because of this weird history in this particular band, which, you know, is very unique to this band, uh, because of this weird history, what companies like Nextel and Clearwire and Sprint and eventually T-Mobile ended up doing was they leased the spectrum licenses. They did not own them, but they had long-term like 30-year leases, meaning that they could use it for whatever they wanted, you know, f for that whole 30-year term, but they technically did not own the license. They were only a renter. And for those of us who have, you know, grew up renting and then bought our own homes, uh, uh, it's a lot better. It's, yeah. it's better to own than rent. Yeah, yeah. I'm renting right now. And it's like, wow, I am paying my landlord's mortgage. I'm sure she loves that, but <laughs> I'm excited to, you know, exactly. build a, acquire something for myself. Yeah. Um, and as homeowners are watching the value of our houses increase every month, you know, it's, yeah, it's a you're like, Wow, this is perfect. Like, it's right. so great. I bought it a while ago and like the value's increased. So yeah, it sounds like these educational institutions, they have their licenses. And it's probably for their region, right? So they can build in like around the school or in that town or whatever. And the other 2.5 gigahertz spectrum licenses were available to the carrier. So Sprint bought as much as possible, probably T-Mobile now owns that and can use them. But it sounds like there are like holes in pockets where unfortunately they can't own. So they are renting and leasing the spectrum to fill in the gaps and to build out their network. Um, is this working for T-Mobile? It sounds like they tried to purchase it. Are they able to acquire it? And I guess you had a pretty interesting take in the article where it sounded like there was some new legislation that could really impact the future of the spectrum for T-Mobile. So what's going on there? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, yeah. And to be fair, you know, whether you're whether you own the license or whether you're renting the license, you know, you, you still get to use it. So, you know, for for T-Mobile or any other company, you know, as, as long as you are able to use it, you can use it. So whether it's a renting situation or an owning situation, you're still living in the house. You still have a place to call yeah. home. Um, but yeah, essentially what the FCC did, they, they voted in, in 2019 to change the rules around the licensing of this band. And because they, they knew, everyone knows that it makes zero sense for a college to be required to hold on to the license and to lease it to a company like T-Mobile and for T-Mobile not to be able to own it. You know, the, the rules around those licenses were that only educational institutions could own the license. That, that was the rule. So T-Mobile like 
you know, legally they could not own the license. It was not an educational institution. So in 2019, the FCC, you know, voted to change those rules to modernize the rules to sort of fix everything. And like you mentioned, the the geographic boundaries of those licenses are also super weird because in the 60s, they were just basically a big circle. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you've ever tried to put, a, you know, like a puzzle together with circles, like it doesn't work. You know, you need There's like gaps squares. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't, you know, so all, there was all these like weird circles everywhere. So like the, the geographic boundaries of the licenses also made no sense. You, you literally could not assemble them into a, you know, into a, a cohesive coverage area. And, uh, and so in 2019, the FCC basically voted to just clean all that up. They said, if, if you hold these licenses, you can sell them. Uh, you don't have to be an educational institution anymore to, to own the license. And then they also said, you know, eventually we're going to, clean all this up and all the, they call them uh, white spaces, basically the, you know, if you put two circles together, all that territory that is not covered, that geographical territory that is left uncovered, they're going to license all that as well. And so that was their goal is just to basically clean up the whole thing. But the, I, I think that the truly fascinating situation in all this is that, you know, T-Mobile, so so there was a company called Clearwire that and Nextel, they acquired all these leases, then Sprint had them, and then T-Mobile acquired Sprint. Now T-Mobile has finished its acquisition of Sprint, and it's in the weird situation of having a lease on these licenses, but not owning it. And then the FCC voted to say that the owners of the licenses could sell them. So T-Mobile's in this very strange position where it has all these leases, it does not own the licenses. The people who with, with the licenses can sell them, so should T-Mobile buy should T-Mobile buy the spectrum that it's currently renting? And so it's in this really weird sort of nebulous area of like I you know I probably want to buy all these things, but it's going to be really expensive. And you know uh, can they sell them? Can they sell them to us? Can somebody else come in and and literally buy the licenses out from under T-Mobile? That's the situation that's playing out right now. Yeah, that is really interesting. And you know as T-Mobile it probably makes more sense to buy the license you own it you don't have to worry about it and like if you're renting it's cheaper maybe year over year but in the long run as these leases go on as you mentioned for 30 years or however long they are going like it it ends up being more expensive typically is what i would imagine yeah exactly and i mean there is the the very real potential of verizon you know coming into this area finding these these spectrum owners like a you know the Christian College of Georgia is the one that I wrote about but there's others there's lots of others there's Albright College in Pennsylvania lots of educational ins institutions own these licenses there there is the potential for Verizon to come in buy these licenses from these you know colleges and high schools and stuff and then charge T-Mobile rent you know what I mean? For, for oh, T-Mobile to, to you literally use its own network you know, <laughs> where, where it's paying rent to Verizon. You know, there is that possibility. It's a, it's a remote possibility, but because of all these weird, you know, rule changes in the history of the band, that, that's really where we are right now is like, there is this possibility. What, I guess as a, as an editor, what would you hope to see happen with this spectrum? Like you reported oh. on the story, you gave the facts. What yeah. do you personally hope to see come out of this? <laughs> that is a wonderful question because the, the one thing as a, as a, as a journalist who is covering this industry, the one thing I value above all else is chaos. <laughs> and so I would love to write the story of, you know, AT&T coming in and buying all these licenses, you know, out from under T-Mobile and, like is that that is just like the the possibility that that could happen just is such a tantalizing yeah you know situation that i would love i would love for more cast i suspect though that you know the the more likely scenario is that uh essentially t-mobile sets aside you know however many billion dollars it's going to need it's going to go to every single one of these high schools and colleges and churches and stuff and just give them money to to buy the buy the license instead of renting it anymore. Now, I, I will say the one the one real interesting thing here, and and I, I focus really heavily on it in the article, is that the the one thing that is sort of somewhat concerning is that T-Mobile has approached some of these uh, churches and and colleges and high schools and said that they cannot sell that license. The only person that they could sell it to is T-Mobile. And what T-Mobile has done is essentially threatened these educational institutions with a lawsuit 
that says, if you try to sell this to anyone else, we'll sue you. If you sell it to us, we'll buy it. So, you know, if you if you put yourself in the role of, a, you know, a dean at a college and you've got these pretty valuable licenses now, but you have a company that's saying, you know, sell it to us or else, you know, or else we will sue you, you know, uh, that is a that is a very unique situation and and one that is, you know, for those of us, for the thought of a, a giant telecommunications carrier to sue a high school potentially, uh, very strange. That yeah, that's absolutely wild. And yeah. I know a lot of, you know, it could be smaller institutions that own this that don't have the money to you know, go to court with T-Mobile and really figure out, like, can they sue us? Should they be suing us? Like, who's going to win this? They just don't have the resources for that. And when they're in a position to receive a whole lot of money, they'll more likely go with that. So it's kind of, I don't know, I guess a sly move by T-Mobile, but... Um, yeah, it doesn't kind of, quite feel fair. But yeah, it's it, kind of but murky. I'm, but I'm not sure what the, right, what the solution is. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's an interesting area. It's yeah. a fairly gray area. And it sounded like you wrote about uh, another organization, the WCO, which approached this small college to actually buy the Spectrum. What were they offering versus what was T-Mobile offering? Yeah, I mean, so WCO is just, a, uh, it's an investment firm. Um, and from my, I, I am not a rich person, but from yeah. my understanding, when you get to be, uh, when you get to have a certain amount of money, you just, you do, you invest in things. Yeah. And you invest in all kinds of interesting things, <laughs> in currency and real estate and NFTs, whatever they are. So so WCO is basically an investment firm that is uh, backed by a, a real rich dude. And they have decided that that they want to invest in these licenses, meaning they want to buy them. Uh, they want T-Mobile to pay them rent. And eventually they want to renegotiate those licenses. The rents. The rent becomes when, more when valuable lease, to T-Mobile. Exactly. When the lease is up, uh, T-Mobile does not want to move. move wow. Ch changing the, changing the, the, you know, if you have to change your spectrum license, like that is a huge deal because oh, yeah. all of the radios on top of all the cell towers, the, the 85,000 cell towers that T-Mobile operates all have radios on, or eventually will all have radios on top of them that only broadcast in the spectrum. So it's not like you can just, change to a different spectrum band. I mean, you would have to go to every single one of those towers, have a bunch of guys climb up there, literally take down all the radios, buy a new radio, put it up there and broadcast in a different frequency. It is, you know, billions and billions of dollars to do that. And so T-Mobile does not want to do that. So, you know, the idea of them, oh, why don't they just go to a different spectrum band? Not, it's, it's, it's not it an option. Not possible. Yeah. I mean, so they, literally they have to have those, they have to have access to that spectrum. The, the renters in a sense, like they can increase the rent basically to just below the break even point for T-Mobile to switch to a different band. And that's so expensive. They have to purchase new bands. They have to, as you mentioned, get the equipment, go to each cell site. Like that sounds expensive, time consuming, would degrade T-Mobile's network considerably in that duration. So they need it. And it sounds like WCO, like they see this as an investment opportunity. They're getting just pure profit from T-Mobile uh, for renting these out. It's almost like Verizon or AT&T. It's a little bit of a different player, I guess, in the game, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're right. That's what they're looking at is the long-term investment of, of owning that Spectrum license. You know, basically what they would do is they would buy the lease. The lease terms are, have already been agreed upon. So it's not like T-Mobile would, would suddenly have to owe all this extra rent. But at the yeah. end of the lease term, you know, whenever it's over, they would renegotiate. And then in that case, the owner of the license would be able to charge an exorbitant amount for, for yeah. T-Mobile. And, you know, any of the current license holders would be able to do the same thing. The thing about this investment company called WCO is that they were going to buy a bunch of them now. Uh, and so, you know, they were they they offered. Uh, so the so the the, the main uh, college that I wrote about in this article is the Christian College of Georgia. The this investment company, WCO. Uh, offered them $5.5 million for one license, which there's a, there's more than a thousand licenses out there. Jeez. So, you know, whatever the, that math is, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and that was, that's one offer they've offered. WCO has offered to buy dozens of licenses around the country for similar terms. Uh, but T-Mobile came in, sued that college or, threatened to sue the college and but and then offered them one million dollars so 
WCO is offering the college $5 million. T-Mobile is offering them $1 million. However, T-Mobile is saying, if you don't buy, if you don't sell it to us, us sorry, excuse we'll me, if you don't buy it, if you don't sell it to us, we'll sue you. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's just, I feel like they get so murky so quick. So weird. Such yeah. a weird situation. That's, someone's you know, gonna, just... someone's gonna have to iron this out. Otherwise, T-Mobile's just gonna do this with all the same institutions. Like WCO is gonna be there like, hey, five million bucks for this uh license t-mobile mm, how about not here's yeah. a fifth of what they're offering and we're also going to see you yeah yeah if but, and if you don't if you don't uh sell it to us we'll sue you yeah. uh, you know and so it's just it's it's a very strange situation because you know it, it potentially sets the stage for t-mobile to just say here's a dollar uh we'll yeah. sue you if you don't you know if you don't take this deal you know it's a deal you can't refuse <laughs> Uh, Wild. It's just, yeah, so weird. And so where things stand right now is that um, uh, the Christian College of Georgia has taken this whole issue to the FCC. And they are saying, FCC, you need to like, you need to figure this out. You need to tell yeah. us what to do. Because what the Christian College of Georgia wants is for the, the terms of the lease to be sort of written off and erased. Uh, because the terms of the lease do say that, um, you know, T-Mobile has the opportunity to buy the license. Uh, but the Christian College of Georgia says, well, it, it does, it, it, there's a negotiation about the terms of the lease. Sure, and sure, they yeah. Now. So, so it's, sure. it's at the FCC now. Yeah, like I'm sure after the lease ends, like they could wait it out and then they would have to make a new lease and they could make new terms in that lease where someone else could buy it, things like that. Yeah, so that, it, the lease won't be up until in an, for another, I think it's like, 20 years or something Jeez, so it's a lot my, my goodness 15 years or something yeah um so it sounds like t-mobile there's they got the spectrum 2.5 gigahertz they toted it as the goldilocks spectrum right that perfect combination of capacity speeds and coverage now it seems like there's a lot of problems with that it's not really blanketing the entire united states and you did excellent research to figure out exactly why t-mobile also purchased some c-band spectrum uh, some spectrum in the Andromeda auction that you were covering. Uh, uh, you're the first one to call it that. Thank you. What's <laughs> their strategy there? Like, why why are they buying those licenses, and what are they hoping to do to potentially mitigate concerns for this 2.5 gigahertz uh, fiasco they've found themselves in? Yeah, and you know, it's it's a hard. It, I I. Uh, I wanted to call this a house of cards. T-Mobile's <laughs> network is sitting on a house of cards. It's not. I mean, they have a, a perfectly functioning network. All the license terms are sort of cut and dried. It's just that they're leasing and not owning. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I, I wouldn't describe it as a house of cards, but it is very unique. And 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 right now it's a little bit unclear as to where this is eventually headed. But in the near term, it has no effect on T-Mobile. There's there's no way to, that they're going to suddenly lose their network or anything. That's just not going to happen. But what what it is doing, it is informing T-Mobile's uh, current spectrum purchases. So they like like you said, the FCC recently held uh, two big spectrum auctions, and that's where they like they give you a spectrum license. You buy it in an auction, you own it for a certain amount of time. And so T-Mobile has been buying those licenses, and it's weird because. I, I didn't understand it at first because they've been they're buy, they're not buying normally when you buy licenses you buy you know across a whole state or across a whole country yeah, you, or you buy it so you can cover the entire United States. Yeah, I exactly. Think Verizon, you buy it, right. They did that. Yeah, and that's what it. You know, AT and T bought nationwide. Verizon bought nationwide. They just bought all the licenses across the whole country because they cover the whole country with their network. But T-Mobile's purchases were very strange. They bought, you know, a whole lot in one area, none in another. You know, they cover one city. They don't cover another city. It was just a it patchwork was, of It licenses. was a, a magenta polka dotted map of the United States. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah, it really was. And and I and uh, uh, there's a a real smart guy named Brian Gomer who runs a company called All Net Labs. And, and he basically figured this out. He's like, why are they buying it like this? And he looked at the, uh, he looked at the, the, the light, the this this 2.5 gigahertz, the licenses that have all the leases on them. He looked at those. He looked at the the um, licenses that T-Mobile bought at the auctions, and and basically T-Mobile is trying to fill in all these weird holes that are a result of the weird uh, FCC licensing regime that stretches back to the 1960s. So that so that those rules <laughs> that came up in the 1960s are now informing. T-Mobile's current spectrum purchases because the carrier wants to, you know, have a 
have a complete network and not a network that, you know, is super deep in one city and super yeah. slow in another. They don't want the patchwork quilt. They want something that's contiguous across contiguous. the United States. And the value of a contiguous network uh, was put on display by Verizon. So, oh yeah, you know, Verizon uh, participates in all these spectrum auctions. They, they you know, they're no different than T-Mobile. Um, however, in the C-band auction last year, uh, a very similar spectrum to the T-Mobile 2.5 gigahertz, uh, uh, Verizon spent $53 billion. And the reason it spent so much was to get like perfect contigu contiguous coverage. So not only is, you know, they, they have no holes, they also have all the different um, blocks all lined up. So, you know, if you kind of think about Spectrum as, a, as sort of a Lego structure, you know, instead of having a bunch of holes in your little creation, it's like all the same color, it's all the same type of brick. They're all perfectly matched together and that's and that's why Verizon spent so much money is so that they could have a, a spectrum, uh, a contiguous spectrum all over the whole country. Yeah. And we're starting to see the benefits of that now already. They launched C-Band. It's been, you know, we don't have it here in Colorado, but I've loved seeing people on Twitter and Reddit showing, you know, 400 megabits per second when places that used to be getting 80 to 100. I've seen over a gigabit per second. Like this was huge for Verizon's network. I'm like, Speaking of Spectrum auctions, it actually sounded like there was another 2.5 gigahertz auction coming up. So what is going on there? Are are people, are the carriers ready to buy 2.5 gigahertz out from under T-Mobile's nose? I know uh, that. And actually that is, there's, uh, Spectrum auctions are a big deal. Uh, you know, the C-band auction raised $80 billion in bids and the most recent one, uh, that we've been calling Andromeda. That one raised $22 billion in bids. Yeah. Um, so these are huge events. But uh, the the next one that's probably going to happen, hasn't been scheduled yet, but the next one that's probably going to happen is for these 2.5 gigahertz licenses, the, the exact same spectrum that T-Mobile currently uses for its mid-band 5G network. But the thing is, is that um, the FCC is, it, it is not a nationwide auction. It is, it is not nearly the same as the C-band auction or the Andromeda auction. Instead, it's, it's basically all of the weird holes that, you know, like we talked about those circles that don't really fit together. It's, it's those things outside of the circles. They, they like combined all of the scraps and were like, it's this is what, scraps. yeah, this is That's what we exactly have to auction. If anyone wants it, like, please come and buy it. Mm -hmm. So it's in like, you know, podunk places like where I grew, where I grew up in Socorro, New Mexico, it would be places around there where there's just, you know, it's just rural, there's no one out there. It's it's those kinds of things. And so if you're T-Mobile, you are very interested in buying those licenses at that upcoming auction because it allows you to, you know, just what they've been doing in all these auctions to flesh out their coverage to, re you know, eliminate all those weird holes in their coverage area. So they're very interested in this auction and they've been very uh, clear to the FCC about how they want that auction to go. They want it to happen now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so it, uh, it, it now it creates the very distinct possibility of uh, T-Mobile or sorry, no, of AT&T or Verizon or Dish entering this auction and bidding for those licenses that T-Mobile actually wants. Right. Yeah. Is, there's very little reason for Verizon to buy a bunch of random 2.5 gigahertz licenses in you know, Socorro, New Mexico. There's a lot of reason for T-Mobile to do it. However, Verizon could come in and just start bidding on it just to make sure that T-Mobile pays more. They, yeah. they bid up the price so that eventually when T-Mobile does win the, the, the auction, they've paid, you know. They've paid their fair share. Fair share. Yeah. So, yeah. so we have a very, uh, whenever that auction happens, I'd expect, you know, probably later this year, maybe early next year. Uh, there's going to be some some interesting bidding going on, I'm sure, uh, on all those weird licenses. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Mike, it was an incredible story. Love the thorough research that you put into this, and it clearly shows, and the graphs you have included are outstanding. So, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I want to thank you for that. And also, thank you for your coverage for the uh, everything going on with the FAA and the C-band deployment and that um, just craziness that was the past month. I feel like it was hilarious to, to follow that. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I guess for anyone listening, like definitely check out Light Reading. It's It'll be linked in the video description, all of Mike's recent articles, uh, which has just been awesome to follow. So Mike, thank you so much for taking time to join me on the show today. Great. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it.